И вот что будут делать маги и что будут делать люди, люди на имбл, мы с вами сейчас поговорим. Right now, we will talk about what mages and what people should do on Nimble. But before anything else, it should be mentioned that traditionally, this festivity was dedicated to the Great Mother. The Great Mother in the image of the tree Yun Bridget. This, I remind you, is a Celtic festivity. Therefore, of course, it would be appropriate to remember particularly the Celtic tree Yun goddess Bridget, or the triple goddess Bridget. It is a very ancient deity. Later, of course, the pastors naturally started calling her Saint Bridget, although nobody knows what historical figure this is actually supposed to be. Perhaps this figure did not even exist. And her ancient origins have, of course, nothing to do with Christianity. She's a very ancient goddess. On the territory of the Celtic Isles, as well as on the continental Celtic territory, she went by the name of Brigantia or Brigindo. Actually, the root of the word Brig means high, and this goddess was called the High One, or the Exalted One, or the goddess of a high place, or the Lady of the Hills. Just Lady of the Hills. The hills were the dwelling place of an ancient folk. In Rus, they called them Divi Ludi. The Celts called them the Fae. And it was considered that they are the folk, the civilization that lived here way before people. And even that for some period during Christianity, we used to live together side by side. Later came about the erection of a strict boundary, when people began to be terribly afraid of the dwellers of that world, with a fear that was inspired by the new religion. Then, of course, the realms got separated and the borders closed. But this border, let's call them magical borders for now, is a magical boundary. There is no actual physical border, and they are still right next to us. And on these festivities, such as the eight marker points of ours, this border, this magical boundary, becomes very thin, and we get an opportunity to get in touch with that world once again. We start to see things that we don't commonly see on just regular days, and the ancient dwellers of our world see us. People who see, see it very well. People who are not able to see but are able to feel, perceive that something starts happening, that there are noticeable changes in the surrounding space and that something is happening that wasn't happening there before. It's not just us who see and feel, but we too are being seen and felt. The tribe that set this boundary in place is much more ancient than us, and they see things differently. They see us slightly differently than we see them. They see us better. And every time they look over the boundary, they look at us and try to find out whether we have changed. Do people still have as much evil in them as they did when they destroyed our sacred groves? When they flattened our hills and mountains? When they cut down our oaks and desecrated our springs? Do people still do those things? Or maybe they got wiser? And they have been peeking over the border for 2,000 years, understanding that nothing has changed, that things only got worse. But lately, something started to change. And maybe the year 2020, that we lived in such a strange and completely unusual way, despite all the losses that humanity experienced, maybe there was a gain that was made. A gain in contact with those who humanity has driven out from this world and therefore out of their own lives as well. But let's get back to Bridget. The triple goddess Bridget embodies the triple mother goddess. They called her by different names, as we already mentioned. The Celts called her Badb. She was called Maka, she was called Eryu, and she was considered to be the daughter of the god Dagda. 
Dagda is this big, large, very kind God, who is the bearer of all blessings to all, and who, according to the legend, never denies anyone in their ask. And Goddess Bridget is his daughter. She is the goddess associated with the healing arts. She heals bodily as well as mental wounds. She is the patron of blacksmithing, which is why she is revered and honored by the smiths and those who work with fire and metal. She is also the goddess of poets. It is considered that she gives them inspiration to pass the words honoring the ancient gods and old way of life from generation to generation, from the times when people lived in contact with their good neighbors, as they called them, with the we folk, as they were also called. And Imbolc is the first moment of the year when a maid receives a sign, some information from other worlds, through the awakened element of air. He receives information about what will happen next, since the air element is associated with information. Air knows no boundaries, it is not familiar with the human borders, it swiftly passes through the boundaries between the world. And the dust of one world doesn't necessarily settle on the road of the same world. It can settle on the road of a different one. So, this is how, on February 1st, on Imbolc, the air that awakes in our world is the air that comes to us from another world. Mages, priests and wolves are the first ones who catch it. The air element brings us information from another world about what will happen here. Why what will happen? Because all worlds, according to the law of equilibrium, must balance and even each other out, synchronize, so to say. And so precisely during these eight marker points, a synchronization takes place through the consciousnesses of mages and wolves. People, usually, even if they catch this current as a rule, are just not learned enough to recognize it. But they do understand that something is happening. When an element returns, it is not frightening. But when an element departs, that is when people sometimes get really frightened. But at this moment in particular, there is no fear left. You will feel it for yourself tomorrow, how much more easily you will be able to breathe. As if you got rid of a certain heaviness, as if getting free from something you were dragging around throughout this year and are incredibly tired from all that dragging. It is as if something will fall off. But that will not be the only thing that will happen. We will try to place ourselves on this boundary and imagine ourselves as those ancient mages and wolves who are the first ones to receive the information from the other world that describes what is to happen. By receiving this information throughout this period until the next festivity of Stara, our ancient teachers began to prepare their tribe for changes. And what about the tribe? And the tribe and folk needed to be ready get ready for those changes. And this readiness for changes was embodied by the cleansing ritual. First, everything had to be washed clean. And we will be doing that as well. It was considered that the ritual cleanliness of a person symbolizes the cleanliness of the world where the information will come to. And one must be absolutely clean on this day, as clean as the Mother Goddess herself, a newborn Mother Goddess, the Triple Goddess, still very young. On this day, it is the youngest image of the Triple Goddess, Bridget, that manifests, her first face, the face of a child. In this period, she is still very pure. She is still innocent. She is still sleeping wrapped in a snowy blanket. But air is already coming into this world, and it must connect with her mind in order to wake her up on Ostara, similar to a light breeze on a spring morning. 
And this is why people, understanding that they are inseparable from this land, from Earth, knowing that they are her essence and her flesh, perform the same mysterious action by ritually cleansing themselves, as if they are by saying, I am the flesh of the Goddess, the Goddess of Earth. She and I are one. And that is why I am now cleansing myself, cleansing my home, cleaning my house, my mind, the same as she would clean herself. I want to become just as pure and as virgin as the Goddess, says the mind of a person. So that the air element, the air of the new world, as a message about the future bridegroom would come into my consciousness and change me. And people prepared themselves, understanding that they are preparing the body of the goddess. And this is also one's own ritual cleanliness. Понимая, что они готовят тело богини, это и ритуальная чистота собственная. You had to wash yourself, wash yourself really well that day, clean your home, get rid of everything old. That is what the ancients said. To get rid of the old is to make space for the new. This also could, of course, be a ritual detachment from a certain thing that is no longer of use, and possibly even a much more serious approach, getting rid of something material or immaterial, meaning a complete revision of your mind, so that the air element could enter your mental body more freely. On this day, you had to cleanse your body, cleanse your home, as we've already said, and people did just that. Mages, on the other hand, stood on the boundary of the worlds, trying to catch the wind. They would catch the wind that came to us from the other world. They listened to the birds. They listened to the rustling of the wind in the bare trees. They watched the stories that the wind told them in the dancing snowflakes. Information brought from the other world. So what should the consciousness of this mage be like? It should be free. It should be liberated from preferences. We know that the air is caught by the mental body and that the mental body works on the vibrations of the air element. And this means that things should be free moving in the mental body. There shouldn't be any preferences. There shouldn't be any expectations of what it all should be like. That is what sets apart the mage of light. The mage of the light path is responsible for his tribe and will lead them where needed based on the air he receives. And he shouldn't keep any preferences. So what kind of air was it? What other information did they catch aside from the information about the future that awaited the said tribe? Those who fulfilled the function of druids. Wolves, leaders, leading their tribe into the future, leading their folk. All this is being described to us by the upcoming mysteries. All mysteries of the year, all eight marker points, as I already mentioned, are connected with Mother Goddess. Which means that the information that comes to us on Imbolc is related with the knowledge about what awaits, what will be happening with this land. Ritually, Earth has several fundamental actions that happen to her. It is her awakening, it is her great wedding to the priest-king whom she chooses as her husband, the birth of the new god and the departure of that god into the darkness, to the dark mages, in order to learn and subsequently emerge afterwards in a new quality, as a new force, a new god, returning as his new breath on the Imbolc festivity a year later. So this process of marriage, childbirthing, the maturing of a son, the departure of a son, 
is so that he would return in a new quality as a new husband of the earth. This entire ancient process is the one that is recreated throughout these eight marker points, which we each will go through, each according to its own legendary basis. The information that the Volks receive on Imbolc is the breath of the mother, with which it tells us what kind of husband she desires, or what is it that should be in this world, who should be king, and from whom, what idea, what concept she would like to birth the new reality from, which, once born, will be developing independently. And this information, in many ways, predetermines the lives of people, such as who is to be in charge and who should play a secondary part. What will happen to people? In what direction will they go? Which trials will they have to pass together with their God, together with their King? What sort of threats will they face this year? What ideas need to be implemented? All of that is received on Imbolc. 